Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Went out to a local flea market this morning with Iris and saw this Petrozoli 50 caliber mountain rifle, flintlock version, uh, sitting on a table. And uh, it's not often that you find a flintlock firearm at a flea market to begin with, let alone at a decent price. And I looked it over pretty good and it was tagged $350 on the tag, which is probably less than half of what it sells for new to begin with. And I looked it over really good, and I thought about it, and I walked away from the table a little bit, and I called my buddy Steve Critter Davis, and I said, hey, man, I said, I think I found a gem here. And I uh, told him about the gun, and his response was, you don't own it yet? <laughs> so I walked around a little bit more and thought about it, and I walked back over and talked to the gentleman, looked the gun over again, gave it a little quick inspection. We'll talk about that in a few minutes in the video here and uh, ended up getting it for $275. So this is a Petrozoli 50 caliber flintlock mountain rifle. Very typical from the period of 1760 to the late 1770s for sure all along the eastern frontier. Very much a Pennsylvania style type rifle as far as the drop butt goes but it was called the Blue Ridge or Blue Ridge Mountain Rifle is what they called this by Petrozoli. A very, very nice clean design. Um, like I said, it's a heavy duty 50 caliber octagon barrel. Should be a good shooter. But what we have to do now is now that we've inspected the outside of it and bought this firearm, we need to take it apart, clean it, inspect it, and make sure it's safe before we attempt to fire it. And that's what we're going to do right now. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys, so we've got a couple things going on here. We have taken the lock mechanism completely out of this firearm and you can see it's got a lot of rust on it in here we're gonna to have to clean all of that up it is working very very well it just needs to be cleaned up and dressed up a little bit now my next worry was that I didn't know what was in the bottom of the barrel I dropped the ramrod down into the gun and it made a pretty good thud but it didn't really bounce like it was all the way to the bottom of the barrel so I figured that there might have been some type of a load or charge still in the gun so at this point, what I've been doing is pouring hot water down the barrel, and you can see by the color of this water that's coming out, it's almost black. Most likely, there was some powder residue of some kind down inside. So now what I'm trying to do is get it to run clear through this touch hole, picking it out as I go. And once I get that water running clear through there, then I can continue to start making sure that this firearm's in good working order that I picked up today. Okay. You can see now I've got water just comes straight out of the side of that touch hole and it's clear now that tells me that at least that gun's clear now and it will fire no problem as long as the lock mechanism is working properly and everything's clean and dried out that gun's gonna fire when I try to fire it so now it's a matter of drying the gun out letting it drain turning it upside down swabbing the barrel cleaning that out real good cleaning up the barrel oiling it up real good and then we'll work on the lock Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to clean this lock up. And I've got this uh, rust eraser that I use sometimes on knives and things like that. And that'll take care of most of the surface stuff on here. I want to scrub the, make sure that I get the prison really clean. It's got some surface rust on it, but it doesn't really have any pitting on it. So that just makes it look more brown, more antique, more used. And I've got some steel wool here as well. And I'll use that too. And I generally, in the field, will use some type of a vegetable-based oil to take care of all my firearms, tools, knives, things like that. But when I'm at home or at the cabin, whatever the case may be, or I'm doing an initial cleaning like this of something that I have purchased, I'm going to go ahead and use a REM oil on that to make sure that I get the best cleaning I can get on it the first time around. And you can see how black this thing is it's just filthy dirty but right now I'm just kind of wiping everything out first and then I'm gonna go in spray it down with the oil and wipe it down really good again with a rag right now I'm just trying to get all the surface rust off of anything that may have surface rust on it then I'll go back and oil it to keep it from rusting any further and this gun already had a flash pan guard on it right here it just keeps sparks from flying out of the pan and what those were generally for was soldiers 
back in the day would line up in lines right next to each other side by side so when you spark this the sparks would come flying out the side of this thing and to keep the sparks out of your buddy's face you would have this on your firearm it wouldn't necessarily have been something that was used too much along the frontier but it's already on there so I'm not going to take it off it gives us some nostalgia I don't think the gun came with that on it when it was new I've looked up the Petrozoli Frontier Model Firearm Frontier Model Flintlock on the, the internet on Petrozoli's website and it definitely didn't come with that to begin with once we get this cleaned up really good then we can oil it down initially with just some rim oil like I said I'm just going to spray the whole thing down really really good and then I'm going to wipe it down really good with the rag to give it an initial oiling initial coat of protection and then later on like I said in the field I'll use a vegetable based oil and fix and wax and things like that. We we'll use fix and wax on the stock here when we get to cleaning that up and we get to wiping it down to make sure that this weapon you know we want to make sure before we even attempt to mess with this thing or fire it that we know it's safe that we know everything's operational that we know the weapon's safe it's hard to be able to tell those kind of things especially with some type of a flintlock firearm like this without taking the thing apart so sometimes when you're buying these things you're buying them a little bit on trust I mean you can drop the ramrod down make sure it goes all the way down by measuring it into the firearm to make sure it doesn't have a load stuck in it or something like that and you can you know operate the lock mechanism while it's on the firearm to make sure it's sparking well the springs are tight the main springs tight and things like that but other than that there's not a whole lot you can do check trigger pull things like that trigger sets and things this has got a set trigger on it make sure that the stocks aren't cracked and all things all the things like that and the barrels not got a lot of pitting in it and things but you're pretty much at the mercy after that of trust until you can get home and pull the thing apart actually and see what you're dealing with okay so that makes our lock pretty well clean now I've had this gun standing upside down for quite a while I'm not going to do a whole lot to this barrel I'm going to scrub it down with some steel wool here real quick just to take any surface rust off of it that might be on it and then I'm going to wipe that down and oil it as well and then I'm going to oil the wood initially the other thing that I would want to check when I were looking at this firearm is to make sure that number one there's no cracks in the stock anywhere that are going to affect how well this barrel holds down to the stock and things like that we know now that water flows directly down the barrel and through the touch hole which means if the water goes in and out sparks are going to go in and whatever's in the barrel is going to come out so we're good to go there now we just want to give it an initial cleanup job and protect it to make sure that it's going to be protected initially before we start to carry it in the woods and like I said I'm using rem oil for this in in a situation where I'm at a base camp or I'm at my cabin or whatever the case may be out here on the porch of my cabin but if I were in the woods maintaining this gun I would just use natural oils, tallows, fixing waxes, things of that nature. And I'm putting a couple coats of REM oil on here just to make sure that it gets down into the metal really good. Okay folks, so we've got our 50 caliber mountain rifle all put back together, oiled up, dried out, should be ready to go. Now, what we want to do is obviously we want to fire this weapon, but before we're going to load a ball down this barrel, we want to fire kind of a fouling load out of it just to make sure that it's going to function properly what I mean by that is we're going to just put half of the load in we're going to put a measure of powder in about three quarters of what I would normally use and then we're going to just put a wad in front of that and then fire the wad out of the gun and nothing else to make sure everything functions properly and the reason I'm doing that is if something doesn't function properly and I have to remove that load from the barrel of this gun it's going to be a lot easier to do that if I don't have a ball in there if I go jam a ball down the barrel of this rifle and I've got to pull the ball out that's a whole different ball game than trying to just get a patch and wad and powder out of there so what we're going to do is we're going to take our rifle we've got a powder measure in our kit here and we're going to 
load it up with powder. And like I said, you know, we're not going to load this thing up completely. We're going to give it about a three-quarter load. So we'll dump that down the barrel. I always tap it a little bit as I go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a patch. And basically a patch just means that we're going to cut a piece of material that we carry with us that's been lubricated. And we're going to cut that off. Now, this material has been sitting on the shooting bag for a little while. And it's not very well lubricated. So what I am going to do is I'm going to open up this tin that I have of fixing wax. And I'm going to wax this patch really well before I shove it down that's going to lubricate the barrel on the way down as well so I'm going to do that before I shoot this fouling load out as well before I want to shoot a bullet out of this gun I'm going to want to lube my patch as well because it makes it a whole lot easier to load into the firearm in the end and typically you'd be using this enough that your patch material wouldn't dry out it would stay pretty well greasy. So we've got this greased up. And again, you know, we've got a fiber ramrod here. It's not a wooden ramrod. And for the 21st century long hunter mentality, that's not a big deal. If I were trying to get all period correct with this thing, I'd want a wooden ramrod. But the fact is this ramrod is going to last a lot longer. It's got tips on both ends that you can put cleaning implements things like that on so it's not a bad ramrod I may hang on to it for a little while now I've got my load in the gun I'll move this flash guard out of the way so you can see what we got going on I'm going to put the gun on half cock and I'm going to prime the pan and I can prime the pan with the same powder that I'm using from my horn but I carry a smaller horn with me that's generally got a finer grain powder in it that I use for priming And all I really want to do is fill that divot up that's in the pan. And I showed that in a past video, how to do that. And then I'll shake a little bit of it toward the flash hole there. Close the pan down. And we should be ready to test this thing out to see if we're going to get this fouling load to shoot out of this firearm. At this point, remember we've got set trigger, so we're going to pull the hammer back to full cock. Once we pull on the back set trigger, now that trigger's set, and it's set for a very low poundage of pressure. So let's go ahead and try to shoot this fouling load and see what happens. Okay, now we know we're in the money. Now we know this thing's going to shoot beyond the shadow of a doubt. We're ready to load some ball ammunition in here. Okay guys, real quick, let's talk about one more thing that is beautiful about the flintlock. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our measure of powder set up so that we can shoot ball ammunition out of this gun. So we'll get our powder measure filled to the right capacity here. And I'm going to fill it about three quarters of the way up. This is the same powder measure I use for my 20 gauge which is 62 caliber. Generally speaking, you'd want to use about the same volume of powder that you're using that your caliber is. So a 50 caliber, would you'd start with about a 50 grain load, 62 caliber, a 62 grain load, and so on and so forth. This is set up for a 62 caliber firearm, so I'm filling it about three quarters of the way up for a 50 caliber. That'll be a good starting load. Now, let's get this in here, and then let's talk for a minute about one of the things that's beautiful about this gun. This is a 50 caliber weapon. I do not have any 50 caliber round balls because I don't own any other 50 caliber guns. I do have 45 caliber balls. So that means they're going to be quite a bit smaller than this. So what I'm going to need to do is to be able to make this thing shoot fairly well is I'm going to take a fairly thick piece of patch and I'm going to double it up so that my normal patch thickness is doubled over and I've got this thing nice and greasy now 
and I'm going to double that patch over and put that ball in the patch with the sprue straight up and the sprue is where you cut the ball off at. There's a little nipple on there where you cut that off in the mold. And if you, you probably saw that, if you go back to some of my older videos that have us show making round ball, you'll see that. So now we're going to make this a little bit thicker so that when we put it in here, it will still run down the barrel and that patching is what's going to catch in the rifling. So basically we're building around here. We'll go ahead and shove this down in the barrel. Get that all the way down next to the powder. Just like that. Now we're ready to prime the pan and fire the weapon for real. So let's go set something up. Okay, so I've set up a target out here. I've zoomed in on it best I could. We're going to back up behind the camera to about 30 yards. And we're going to try to shoot this piece of round flat that we have that's cut off from a stump. We've got a light spot in the middle of it. That's what we'll aim at. And we'll see how this rifle does. Stand by. Okay. You can see we knocked this big chip out of it. So we're a little bit, well, I don't know. We were low, right, left. It's hard to say. I didn't pay attention much attention to what the orientation was of this thing. So we'll give it another shot. We'll clock it this time so we know where we're at. Just like that. Okay guys, there she is, blowed in half. Alright guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video today on the Blue Ridge Mountain Rifle, Petrozoli 50 caliber flintlock. I think we got her cleaned up and ready to rock and roll. Looks like she's in primo shape. She's hitting pretty well from a fairly short distance. We'll see how she does out 50, 60, 70 yards, but you know anywhere from 15 yards back to about 30. She's pretty close. Again, we're using a 45 caliber ball, which is actually about 0.43, and this is a 0.50 barrel. So we doubled over a heavy patch and lubed it up well with fixing wax. And as long as we get that patch tight in there, it's going to get in those grooves and spin that ball. But it's still not going to be as accurate as it should be, but it's close enough. And that's what counts when we're talking about gathering meat. Close enough counts for sure. So, again, versatility of the flintlock weapon. I gotta have powder, but just about anything I can get down that barrel is gonna come out the other end. Even if it's not exactly the right size ball, I can compensate for that somewhat. It just can't be too big. Right now, all I've got is a 45 caliber mold, so that's what I'm gonna roll with. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, my family, all the Pathfinder affiliates. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.